So today, upon popular requests, I'm going to be demystifying ratio rhythms. Because obviously the things that come naturally to me, your feeble minds cannot grasp. Even though this is coming from a guy who combs his hair before putting on a shirt. Anyways, ratio rhythms are what the name implies, which is a ratio between two rhythmic values usually denoted by x colon y. And the x number being that note value into another note value's space. For example, 5 colon 3, that would be 5 notes in the space of 3, and depending on whether or not you're using quarter notes, or using 16th notes, or 8th notes, it depends on the context. So if you saw 5 colon 3, which is a ratio of 5 to 3, and the notes were 8th notes, then you would have 5 8th notes in the space of 3. And that would get a dotted quarter pulse, like this. So you can see there that those five notes were outlining that dotted quarter pulse, you know, that That's because, you know, the five colon three, you know, normally three eighth notes will be um, outlining that dotted quarter pulse, you know, the but we're just adding two more notes in there, two more notes in there for that um, 5 colon 3 part. And more often than not, you will see uh, 4 colon 3, which is uh, actually just another way of writing um, dotted 16th notes. And the reason why they're dotted 16th notes is because you're taking the, um, the dotted quarter pulse and you're just assigning four note values to that pulse. That's the same thing that you're doing when you're um, playing you know, normal 16th notes. It's da 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 Well, the same thing applies here. Um, you're just changing that pulse and you're adding the four notes into it. da 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 and that uh, actually sets you up for a nice metric modulation as well. The That's how four uh, colon three works. So you can apply uh, this idea of ratio rhythms to uh, polyrhythms as well. Um, everyone has, well, I don't know if everyone has, but we have that polyrhythm that is four against five. Uh, it goes a little bit like da 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 da. Uh, da, 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 where you're in 5-4 and you are cycling four evenly spaced uh, quarter, well, quarter notes into the measure of 5-4 and that can be written as 4 colon 5 or the ratio of four notes to 5 da, 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 da. And it becomes a little bit tricky once you flip that ratio around and you have five against four. I don't know if I can play that, I can try. And the same idea applies to, you know, those more simple polyrhythms like two against three, three against four, four against three, you know, like. Yeah, that's just two against three, which is two colon three or dotted quarters. Or da 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 That is three against four, which is the inverse of four against three. You know, the da 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 It's the same idea except we're changing that note value. Whereas before we had that eighth note, now we're just shortening it to a quarter note. So in case you're not entirely convinced that I'm smarter than you, uh, we're just going to go ahead and write this on paper. So let's talk about that uh, 5 colon 3 rhythm again. Uh, that would look like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 colon 3. So let's talk more about that 5 colon 3 rhythm again. You got 
five eighth notes into the space of three. You can see those five eighth notes are right there. And if we're in three, four, you will only need um, two of these to fill a bar of three, four. And again, that's because we have prerequisite knowledge. I hope that three, four only has six eighth notes in it. Because two eighth notes is one quarter note times three is six. And the same applies for these four threes here as well. And you know, you can have this in four, four if you want, but you just have uh, a quarter note space left. So da ka da 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 if you want. That would be uh, one and a half beats, three beats, and four beats. There you go. So colon three rhythms are pretty easy so long as you have the eighth note value is equal to three. But you don't always need, you know, an eighth note value there. You can do something like this, five against four. So we know here that we need five notes in the space of four. But wait, what if we do this? Two, three, four, five. Let's make these quarter notes. Two, three, four, five. There you go, there's that five colon four. And you know, sometimes you can see that people will put um, the note value assigned right here. Uh, that would be a quarter note in this instance, obviously. Sometimes they do, you know, eighth note, sixteenth note, whatever it happens to be. But here, uh, this would be in four four, hopefully. And this would be five quarter notes in the space of four. And what do you know? That is a five against four polyrhythm. But let's get a little bit more wacky here. Let's see where this can take us. Here I have a 16th note accent pattern that's divided into 3, 5, 5, 3. And it so happens that if you add these numbers up, you get to 16, so that fits into 4, 4. And you would never ever see, hopefully you'd never ever see this kind of accent pattern written like this, because it would generally be broken into 4. This accent pattern can be divided into something that looks like this. So we have a dotted eighth here, um, dotted eighth tied with an eighth, dotted eighth tied with an eighth, and a dotted eighth. And we have to look at the big picture here as well. The reason why I'm writing it like this is because we have the macro rhythm, or in this case, the micro rhythm of uh, 16th notes. And whenever you're zooming out and you're grouping notes together like this, you have to look at the lowest common denominator here which is the 16th notes. And we're going to ignore uh, these threes at the end, and we're just going to focus on, you know, making some oddball thing with these uh, 16th notes that are grouped into five. And since there are five 16th notes, we can, our rhythm can be x colon five, so long as we have that 16th note marker there if we want to put it. Normally you, you don't need to put that because the context, as long as these, you know, these notes in the ratio rhythm are 16th notes, then you don't need that right there. And yeah, that is a 16th note. It looks crappy, but it is. So taking out these dotted eighths here, we know that we have two and a half beats left to fill up since two dotted eighths is one and a half beats. 2.5 plus 1.5 is four. We could go so far as to say that we want something like this. We have a 7 colon 5 here, and that will fill up one of these 5 16th notes. And remember, that's, that's the same length as this. You know, it's filling the same amount of space, it's just cramming two more notes into there. And we can repeat that for the second 5, or you can fill that in with whatever note value you want. You can even do something really ridiculous like this. And our final product would look something like that. 
keep in mind, you know, you still have a dotted eighth, so the three sixteenth notes. You can even write that as, I don't know, three, no, actually don't do that, never do that. Um, got that dotted eighth pulse, and then you got the dotted eighth tied with the eighth, and then same thing here, because 5 16th notes is equivalent to this rhythm right here. And then you have the second dotted eighth at the end. That's pretty much how ratio rhythms work. You can even, you know, analyze works by Roger Carter, for instance, or uh, Mike Jackson. They both use ratio rhythms often. Here we have a pretty good example of um, a ratio rhythm written in repertoire for marching percussion, uh, written by Roger Carter and his snare break in uh, Broken City 2017. So yeah, uh, we have the ratio 7 to 6 here. Looks pretty intimidating, but it's understandable at least. So what's happening here is um, he's got a normal quarter note filled up here, but he has 12 16th notes to fill up left because 16 divided by, I mean 16 minus 4 is 12. He's basically taking those groups of 6 16th notes that he needs to fill up and he is turning them, he's cramming one more in there which is uh, 7 to 6. So we essentially have uh, one quarter note and then two dotted quarter notes which are each 6 16th notes in length and uh, we have seven sixteenth notes to fill in that dotted quarter space. It's pretty simple, makes sense. So we have another ratio at the end of the break here, seven to five, which is seven eighth notes in the space of five eighth notes. All that is, is two beats um, tied with an eighth note. That gives you five eighth notes. Two quarter notes tied with an eighth note, that's five eighth notes. And that's why there is a dotted quarter space left. Again, six sixteenth notes, one dotted quarter. Pretty simple. Five eighth notes plus four eighth notes equals one bar of four four. And that's why that seven five fits there pretty nicely. And here we have an implied ratio rhythm in uh, SCV's Snare Break this year, 2017. Uh, a lot of the times people won't write the colon 3 next to it because it is implied that since there's two groups of uh, quadruplets in this case that would have to follow that dotted quarter space or the three eighth notes if you will. Uh, that's the same as 4 colon 3 and it is a it's the same thing and the uh, same goes with this one as well it's the same thing as 4 colon 3, but we're squeezing another one in there. <laughs> That's pretty hard to say. But you're still using that dotted quarter space. Hence, the even though you can't see it, the colon 3. Colon 3 always equals dotted quarter pulse. If they are 8 notes, of course. Here's the same quintuplet idea from the SCV break, except now we're looking at something from 2006 Blue Coats. And here, instead of 5 colon 3 and having 8th note values to fill up, this is essentially the same thing, but since 16th notes double up 8th notes, we're given colon 6. And that's still that dotted quarter pulse again, except now we're just taking out one note and we're just making it a little bit shorter. And you have that one quarter note left because it is in 4-4 four four still. Yeah, I hope that um, sums up ratio rhythms pretty well. Um, they're not as hard as you think they are, trust me. As long as you understand what ratio rhythms are doing and what note value they represent, you can pretty much grasp them pretty easily. So yeah.